Hi, my name is Jeremy Fisher. I'm with Wolfspeed, a Cree company, and today I'm going to be giving a demonstration of the Wolfspeed Microwave Office PDK and the layout verification capabilities within it. I have here a simple layout of a single stage amplifier. The amplifier is not really designed to do anything other than demonstrate the layout capabilities. But in this case, we're going to start with a few key things that will help you get your design right before submitting it for tape out. If we go up into the verify layout here, the first thing you would want to do is run a connectivity check and highlight connectivity. This shows you a good DC connectivity and allows you to see if you have any short circuits, open circuits, or unexpected uh, connections between various layers of the, of the design. Now, in order to make this work, you have to have the mapping of the various layers. So if you go down to the highlight connectivity rules, you can see that the PDK comes pre-programmed with all of the connectivity between various layers. Metal to to pad etch, which is essentially a connection layer between various metalization layers. Uh, metal to to cap top, because these are actually just DRC layers that get merged into the same layer for production, and then they're the same metalization layer. And this way you can look and see individually where various connections are. For instance, we have a ground pad over here connected by a via, and you can see that at every point where there's a via in the background, it also gets shorted, showing that you have connectivity there. This is a good tool for simple, as you're going through uh, setup to make sure that you have that connectivity. It doesn't actually ensure that you have a DRC clean um, submission, though. To do that, you need to run DRC rules. So also within the verify, you can go to the design rule check. And here we have a much more extensive list of all of the design rules required by Cree for submission into our fabrication process. Now these are for the G28V5 process. There are slightly different rules for each technology, um, depending on what the uh, requirements are for that particular technology. This is the full set. Um, it captures about 90 to 95 percent of the rules. Uh, we actually use a third-party tool in order to do our final DRC. It has some specific uh, rule catches that are separate from what can be captured within AWR. Uh, we'll get to that a little bit, but as you go along, this is the easiest um, and simplest way to make sure that you're running it. Now, it takes a little while to run it. There's a number of rules, as you can see. Um, if you need to speed it up, as it's going along, you can select individual, pro, uh, individual rule files, or you can select groups of rules. Uh, the first set here is basically a pre-processing uh, pre setup where it booleans various layers in order to make sure that, as I said, the processing rules, which are related to the actual process layers, for instance, that cap top and metal two, they'll get combined here. So when it runs the DRC, it's doing the actual DRC on what's physically going to be um, checked. So you can see here we have a list of failures. Now it, when I did this I actually specifically put in a number of uh, errors so that we could see what they are and you can see they show up in your layout very clearly here uh, with the red bars. And again these are all pre-programmed. Uh, one thing I do want to show is if you zoom in here you can see that we have a number of errors here and what I'm going to do is just turn the DC errors off really quick so that we can see what's going on. We have a section here where the bridge code for this microstrip T and this transmission line was not properly um, caught by the, by the PDK. And this is an important thing to know when you're using Microwave Office. The bridge code is really useful for connecting up different um, different components and having it automatically recognize what's going on and how to connect it. Particularly in our, in our process, we require a lot of filleting and rounding of structures um, that's not particularly typical of lower voltage processes. Um, but you can see right here, we've got an issue. This port was properly um, recognized and we have a nice smooth transition, but over here, it's, it's as if this is just an open stub. And if we look at the circuit, for that, that's the output circuit. You can see what happened is that we're going to a layer of um, hierarchy where we're using a sub-circuit in order to maintain symmetry and simplify. Now this is 
the proper way to do the design. It makes it so that you ensure that you're not catching or having an error on one side and not fixing it on the other. Um, and it, may, it makes it simpler for the DRC, faster for simulation. Um, but hierarchy with bridge code can cause problems. The thing to know is that it's the MLIN structures or other transmission line structures that drive the bridge code recognition. So when you go from a T at the higher level of hierarchy and you push down into this sub-circuit, it's connecting to this transmission line. It doesn't know how to recognize that because the transmission line is at the lower level of hierarchy. So there's a very simple way to get around that, and that's by putting in some zero length, uh, some zero length transmission lines, which basically force it to recognize it as a transmission line at that higher level of hierarchy, instead of as the uh, open stub. And you can see when we do that, we put in a zero length that doesn't actually change the layout. Everything um, remains where it is physically in the layout, but now we have this nice smooth connection as we're supposed to. So just something to keep in mind. It'll help you uh, help save you a lot of frustration when you're going through the actual layout. Uh, another thing is if we looked over here, we had in a section where we had some um, errors in this area and if, if you notice, this is kind of a strange looking mim cap. This is not a standard mim cap from the PDK. This is actually artwork that was drawn using the cell layout parameters in the cell library. So I created this, I drew it by hand, put ports on it to connect it to a via, which is gonna go here into the various transmission line ports. Because it's a strange shape, it's, it's not typical of the shapes that we see normally. But you have to be careful because when you build this up, I, as I said, I put in a component for a via. This was too short in this section, which ended up causing errors. This connection had to be um, rounded because when you use artwork, it doesn't recognize that bridge code. You have to manually put some subsections in there that will capture that. And in our case, these need to be rounded or filleted um, or otherwise mitered in order to make sure that you're passing our, our rules for that. Now, that brings me to the next point. Um, one, and frankly, one of the only things that the microwave office DRC does not capture are minimum radiuses and rounding. Um, however, they have come up with a joint project with um, Design Workshop, uh, which is the actual DRC tool that we use internally at Wolfspeed. And they have come up with a way that you can call the Design Workshop DRC engine directly from the PDK in Microwave Office. Now, the nice thing is when you do this, it means that you're actually using the exact same um, DRC deck and engine to run the DRC. DW2K DRC LVS, this pulls in the engine that utilizes the DW2K rule set. So we're going to open that up. And we'll get this little dialog box. It's set to run the DRC in the Cree G28 V5 process. All the options are set properly by default. You shouldn't have to change anything. And we just select the schematic that we want to run the DRC on. So we run it. It's running in the background here. Um, takes a minute. And here we see the errors. Now, most of these errors were caught earlier, but I wanted to point out a couple. So for instance, inside metal one, not chamfered, inside metal one radius less than three microns, cap open radius less than five microns. These are errors that we tend to catch quite a bit um, when people submit their layouts to us for final tape out uh, because they're hard to catch and uh, tend to be prevalent, frankly. So if we look here, for instance, we have a minimum five micron radius rule for cap open. And when I made this custom artwork, I accidentally made it a three micron radius. This is too small. It would cause processing problems and would probably lead to liftoff errors in the, in the uh, processing. So this just shows you where you can actually see that. Now you'd have to go back in, um, fix the rounding radius on these, on these parts. Uh, similarly, it will catch another issue which are areas where we didn't chamfer or miter at all. And again, this can be from one of two things. Um, quite often, it comes from putting in custom artwork that does not have, as I said, the bridge code capability. But the other thing is, as I mentioned before, 
a lot of the time it's the Emlin or the other transmission line that's driving the bridge code um, recognition. In some cases, we have some specialized artwork that will allow you to connect non emling connections and it'll still um, recognize the bridge code. For instance, you can put a capacitor directly onto a junction like a T or a cross and it'll recognize that. However, there are a number of components where that does not happen. For instance, right here, I have a thin film resistor connected directly to a cross and it doesn't know how to chamfer that or to miter that. So when I do that, I'm going to get an error. Again, as I said earlier, the easiest way to fix this is just to put a zero length um, length of line in there that matches the width of the trans of the resistor landing and that'll miter it properly for you. And we see that in a number of cases. Again, over here, so in this case I actually have a T with a little section of transmission line as I said in order to capture that. And you can see that it does properly actually round that. Um, similarly over here I have a capacitor connected directly to an inductor. It does not know that either of these are transmission lines, so it doesn't know how to handle the rounding. Putting a short piece of zero length transmission line there would fix that. So just a few tips on how to uh, properly address some of these DRC errors that we see. These are very typical, very common. Um, they tend to come in high counts. So the earlier you can catch them and the more easy it is for you to catch them, uh, the quicker your tape out will be. So Take advantage of your layout verification, take advantage of your DRC, um, and hopefully you'll have a great submission. Thanks.